Greetings and welcome to Ob Oblong Inc. webinar. It is now my pleasure to introduce your host, Peter Holst, Chairman and CEO. Thank you, Mr. Holst. You may begin. Thanks. Good morning, Sherry. I appreciate you introducing me. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time to, a uh, little bit of time this morning to spend with us to learn a little bit more about Oblong and its technologies. Um, we have a deck up and running. Hopefully, everybody's logged in and can see it. I'll start, uh, I'll start presenting. Uh, Let's see if we can push the next slide here. Standard safe harbor statements. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the company as an overview. Oblong uh, is a revolutionary collaboration technology that takes conventional products like WebEx or Zoom or Microsoft Teams or anything that's collaborative in nature and significantly enhances the user experience. We aim to provide uh, a unique content collaboration experience that is unlike any other out there today. We have uh, a number of patents in the area of content sharing and collaboration, and we're looking to build a, a company that is going to partner through channels and through direct distribution with some of those companies I mentioned earlier and, and kind of rebuild the collaboration environment from, from where it is today. And I'll talk about sort of the evolution of the collaboration space here in a few seconds. Just quickly about Oblong. Um, company is in the process of, of shifting its, its, uh, its business model to some degree from a product-based business model to a cloud services model, making a lot of progress in the area. Uh, we have significant partnerships in place now with, with companies like Cisco and IBM and looking to monetize uh, much of those partnerships now in the next sort of forward 12 months. Uh, we have a, a very strong leadership team uh, with, with many, many years experience in the collaboration sector. Um, we have about 50 employees, the vast majority of them in either system design or engineering. Uh, we have a very comprehensive product suite that addresses both the in-room and, and now soon to be the remoter experience for online collaboration as you go through the cloud. Um, we, we operate, generally speaking, in the Fortune 1000, so mostly in the enterprise space is where we sell the vast majority of our products. Um, the financial snapshot of the company today, uh, that market cap is a little bit of a moving target right now, so it's actually up significantly from that number since, since this was last printed. Uh, and we had about $25 million of, of revenue in, uh, in 2019. Just a quote from uh, from a number of – we have a number of folks that watch our company pretty carefully, um, but this is from, from M.G. Siegler at, uh, at Google Ventures. Um, and he made this quote a couple of years ago when, when he was sort of talking about the evolution of technology specifically. Oblong's past is, is really very much in the spatial and gestural collaboration, so effectively being able to use hand gestures and physical motion to be able to actually interact with data on a digital canvas. Um, and he made this comment about, you know, what we're doing is, is pretty revolutionary, pretty disruptive in, in, in the market today. And uh, we're certainly thankful to have his and a number of other quotes in the space. But, but this sort of gets me a nice sort of escalation to the next slide where, where really we believe Oblong is going to have a significant competitive advantage in the future. If you look at the evolution of collaboration over the last 40 years, really started in voice, you know, traditional conference calls uh, started way back when. You'd plug into an operator. They would bring you into conference, et cetera, et cetera. That then escalated into automated conference calls through 1-800 dialing and DTMF commands. And then the, the advent of data and content sharing then getting layered into a conference call. Microsoft actually started the space way back in the late 80s and early 90s. And then it evolved into companies like WebEx. Um, who then took sort of a what I would call a meteoric leap from the voice side into the data conferencing and data sharing side. Uh, WebEx was then acquired by Cisco back in 2006, and then a number of other companies followed that concept, which is why don't we share content, why don't we do it through our platforms and make it more proprietary, and then you saw a lot of followers kind of come along in the 2000, 2010, and then back in 2011, 12, another sort of meteoric leap happened in the space when Zoom came about. And, and their meteoric leap was really the notion of adding video in the cloud uh, to scale. Um, and when that happened, it allowed people to 
enjoy a video conference for the first time using a cloud service where there wasn't a lot of lag, a lot of disruption, a lot of pixelation in the video, usually traditional issues that have long sort of bothered the video space were becoming less and less of a problem when Zoom introduced their product back in 2012 and 13. Fast forward, obviously, uh, you know, seven, eight years, Zoom has done incredibly well. Um, add the notion of a, uh, a global event that forces everyone into their homes and, and has a number of people now who have never otherwise used a collaboration service now being forced to use a collaboration service to, to connect. And you now see the market that was once a very good growth market in terms of its linear growth statistics over the last 20 years just go exponential really, really quickly. And so, you know, there's now over a billion people that have logged, either been participating in or are active users of collaboration services. We believe the market is up as much as three or fourfold from where it was uh, pre-pandemic. And you can see a number of other companies like Microsoft, Slack, uh, and others who are more actively out there pushing this notion of, of remote collaboration. We do believe that, that over time people will, will find what they believe is some kind of new normal of, between work office space and virtual space, and we believe Oblong is incredibly well positioned. So, again, you think about audio, you think about the notion of just adding a data stream to audio, then you think about video being the next step, the true next step is probably the evolution of content at this stage, where content becomes the ultimate driver of a collaboration session and gaining insights into that content, understanding at the end of a meeting what happened, where it happened, who said what, and giving people um, almost digital breadcrumbs, if you will, as to how to minimize work, you know, time to get to a product or time to get to a release or, you know, essentially creating massive increases in productivity, that's where Oblong is positioned for the future, is trying to give people those insights beyond just the meeting itself. If you look at the market opportunity for Oblong, historically it's been, it's been a, a very small market because it's been a product. Um, High-end presentation services, extremely interactive, incredible user experience, but traditionally only in the conference room or large scale conference rooms. Um, have a deep, deep level of expertise and, and literally almost 100 patents in the area of gestural, spatial, and content collaboration today. So we've spent a ton of time and money and effort over many, many years to build up a patent portfolio that is really specifically tailored around user experience and collaboration and using content in rooms. And the goal is to, is to move that process and that product effectively into the cloud. And that's what we've been working on now for the last five, six months. Um, so uh, whereas, you know, historically the market was a little more niche, our market now is substantially larger, probably a hundred times larger than when it was about a year ago. And the reason it's gotten so big is because we're moving more and more into becoming a service that is attached to things like a WebEx or things like a Zoom or things like a Microsoft Teams. And um, I'll talk a little bit about our partnerships later in the session. But if you look at the enterprise collaboration market, which has also grown substantially in the last six months, um, there's a virtual meeting segment, there's a content distribution segment, there's, uh, there's a knowledge sharing segment that's sort of bubbling up now. And we believe that our market over the next 18 to 24 months will be somewhere in the one to two billion of addressable revenue as the market grows and evolves. Most of that will be attached to other folks in the space. So we'll be adding value add services um, and, and a stack that is very unique uh, to what people do today, mostly through Cisco is our primary partner today, but we'll be looking to expand that. But we believe we have a very substantial target market right now. It's growing quickly. We, we have substantial pipeline increase in spite, of the, in spite of the market conditions over the last sort of four or five months. So we have, we have a lot of uh, great faith right now that, that people are looking for new ways to collaborate. They're looking for new ways to share content in a more dynamic way 
than what current products offer today. Our flagship product today is called Mezzanine. It's a, it's a workspace where participants add, control, and arrange content simultaneously. Um, it, you may not think that that's particularly unique, but today when you get into a typical collaboration session, one person is the moderator, many people join the session, and towards the end, you start to see a very similar theme, right, arise at every meeting. I've probably attended maybe 200, 300,000 meetings over my 20-year career in collaboration, and one thing is, is the same. There's a moderator, one, that person shares content, everybody watches the content, and sometimes you quote unquote pass the ball or pass control. Then that content disappears, one person shares a new slide, everyone watches that for a second, people ask for content back, there's a nine to 10 second delay, it's sort of a bit disruptive to the meeting, and so when you have a work group session or a real collaboration session, you want things to be free flowing. You want ideas and content and everything to be dynamic so that people can sort of look at different pieces of content simultaneously. Um, that's what work groups are for. They're, they're there to sort of everyone share their ideas and then ultimately come to a conclusion and, and a meeting ends. Our, our aim is to make sure that we provide a platform for people to share their ideas and content simultaneously. So as opposed to doing I share, you share, it's we all share. And provided people have a big enough digital canvas, whether it's a 32 inch monitor or whether it's your laptop or whether frankly you're in a larger scale conference room where you have much bigger canvases through screens, we want an opportunity that content is shared quickly and efficiently so that people can use the content in the way they decide as a group, not one, one share at a time. So here's a concept of, of how mezzanine works. It's really the confluence of audio, video, and content, right? Our goal is to make sure that whether you're in a room on multiple screens, whether you're in a smaller room with a single screen, or whether you're on your desktop, right? You'll be able to see a number of pieces of content being shared relative to the size of your screen. Obviously, if you're in a much larger room, you have a huge canvas in which to display a number of pieces of information simultaneously. If you're on a smaller room, you still have a nice canvas. And if obviously you know, you're at home, which is where a great many people are operating from these days, you still have a canvas, but how the content is shared and how it's disseminated is, is a little bit different, obviously, on a smaller screen, but our goal is to make sure we can give people high levels of engagement irrespective of the room or device that they're engaging from. Here's some typical use cases for us and clients we have today. Um, IBM, PwC, JLL. As you see, most of those folks today are in, are in uh, very nice, very highly engaging room experiences. You see the gentleman on the left there uh, with a device in his hand. We have a proprietary wand, effectively you call it, looks like a remote control, but it allows you to move content from, grab content effectively and move it from screen to screen. It allows you to make it much larger, allow you to contract it. Um, it, it gives you essentially a spatial and gestural aspect to how you move content around from screen to screen. Um, we have a number of different ways how people have applied our technology. Each one of these companies has actually applied it very differently. Um, some are very presentation centric, some are very purpose driven to create a very specific result. And uh, I'll speak to one specifically here next about JLL in terms of how they've demonstrated a very compelling ROI. Um, what's interesting, especially now in context of the current day, um, JLL built a platform that was really about getting people to come into their office, come into their experience centers and as opposed to doing walkthroughs and doing physical walkthroughs of commercial office space, which many of us have done, and you'd go from space to space, block to block, up and down the elevators, JLL created a three-dimensional sort of virtual experience. Um, and they take you through this journey where you start on a map on the left-hand side and then you gradually move to a certain number of spaces that you thought were particularly interesting for you from a location perspective, and then you do 3D fly-throughs, right, of, of the two or three that you ultimately found a particular interest in. 
And Oblong was the underlying technology driving those engagements. So when people wanted to move from screen to screen or the presenter in the room at JLL said, I'll move this piece of content here, or I'll make it much bigger so you can see it, or we can remove it over here altogether. We were the, we were the glue essentially that tied all of those independent technologies together to make it an incredible experience. And, and really what happened with JLL is they bought all of Oblong's technology, mostly in the European side of their business, but some here in the U.S., and they, they had so much engagement early and their, their close rates in terms of getting people from start to finish in the close was expedited by so much, they really returned almost their entire Oblong investment within a very, very short period of time. So an incredible success story at, at JLL. Our products today, we, we, we show the 200, 300, 600, 650 series, all of which are in rooms at this particular time. But we've been working quite a bit on evolving the product so that we can allow for more remote experiences through the cloud. So our, our four primary products are, are these particular configurations for these particular environments. And as I said, we'll talk a little bit about the cloud evolution here shortly. So as, as we think about beyond the conference room, and, and certainly now more than ever, and we've been thinking about how to get to the cloud well before uh, the pandemic struck, um, we've been talking about engagement, user engagement beyond the conference room. And so while historically our products have been very much designed for incredible user experiences inside either network operation centers or security operation centers or just plain old conference rooms, um, getting that experience to the cloud and getting user experiences at the desktop has, has obviously been a challenge, right? There's, there's a very complicated algorithm there that requires you to share multiple pieces of content in real time distributed geographically. And we've made incredible progress in this area and are, are ready to show our sort of first stage kind of wares here coming up in the fall as we talk about a cloud service or the evolution to a cloud service. So we've thought quite a bit about getting, if we couldn't get the user experience from the room to the cloud, we never felt it was worth it because if you're not pursuing a great user experience, an excellent user experience, it's simply not worth it. So we, we've made fantastic progress in this area and we'll launch a new product here in the fall, which will be a cloud service or a version of a cloud service uh, that will connect people back to rooms. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but it's a big focal point. Um, uh, Oblong's history, uh, it was a venture-backed company for many years. There's over $100 million of capital invested in, in very specific technologies around content. And as I've kind of outlined them down below here, I think it's important to note that the spatial computing and the distributed applications piece is really critical. So we have very foundational patents for immersive computational systems and multi-display and, and virtual and augmented reality. Um, what we do in the spatial and gestural control of content using your hands or devices, whether it's through a remote control or just touch, right, on a touch device, uh, is very unique in this space. We have a number of issued patents and we have a number of uh, pending applications as well. And again, we're focused very, very specifically on how people interact with data in real time and how they push that data across geographies. If you look at the landscape today in terms of the competitive environment, um, you, you see some very familiar names on there, right? The likes of Zoom and Microsoft and, and Cisco, um, Slack is on there. Uh, you know, Blue Jeans just got acquired recently by Verizon. You see Polycom, now known Poly. You also see some other companies on there that are more digital interaction and um, that are also, you know, if you, if you look at some of these companies in terms of the capital they're raising in the last 12 months, it, it's pretty significant. Um, the likes of Miro and Bluescape, Jamboard. Um, you'll see some other companies up on the left called, you know, Mersive or ClickShare. Um, and... Um, what's interesting about the entire space is there is a massive push into the, into the online collaboration market right now. And um, a lot of companies are, are taking a stab into the space. 
And I think what makes Oblong very unique is we're laser focused on the concept of content and interacting with that content. Um, many of these companies have very specific domains of expertise that is not where we're focused. Um, and I think we've been validated, right? We have a number of companies that are now calling us, trying to get a better user experience than what they have today. Um, and I think our partnership with Cisco, uh, which I'll talk about here at the end, and I have spoken about in prior sessions, although at a much higher level, is starting to pay some real dividends and starting to get some real yield in terms of, uh, in terms of revenue and, and upside and market opportunity. Um, when you when you look at the addressable market, I've, I've talked about three or four X. I think it's actually grown to that level now in the last kind of 30 or 60 days. You just look at the sheer number of people now that are interacting with content remotely. It's gone from being a very unfamiliar product or user experience for very many people who have just traditionally commuted and gone to an office and maybe haven't had to use this technology. But there's now hundreds of millions of people that are now using the likes of WebEx or Zoom or Teams on an everyday basis. And they're now getting more familiarity with it. I was, I was at a, a session the other day where a very, very many folks in the education market specifically who were using Zoom and are now moving to different platforms um, or using different platforms because of integrated learning or curriculum, they're looking for better experiences to engage their students. Um, the one to many is very difficult to teach in an environment these days. And when I've shown this to a lot of folks in the education market, you know, they're passionate about it. They want to be able to share multiple pieces of content simultaneously to their students, whether it's at the K through 12 level or even at the post-secondary level in higher education. And getting them introduced to these products has been that first step. Just getting folks on to Zoom or Teams or what have you has been a critical catalyst in just getting exposure to the space that uh, has been unlike anything in the, in the history of the entire market. Talked about our partnerships a little bit earlier. Our primary uh, go-to-market partner today is Cisco uh, and the Cisco WebEx team specifically, particularly in the video devices segment. Um, we do integration, deep integrations today into, into the WebEx video device environment. Um, deep in, we're becoming much deeper into the WebEx team side of things. Um, we are a Cisco certified solution partner. We're available on the global price list. Um, we've just done some substantial marketing work with Cisco recently to generate uh, what I would say is a significant amount of lead generation in the last 30 days. On the IBM side, we're exploring some interesting things with IBM Garage on the product side. Um, IBM just made a big announcement into the government space today, which I think is a logical market for us in the public sector. So we have some interesting, very uh, big market opportunities in, uh, in commercial and um, particularly in the, in, the, uh, in the government, in the federal government space right now that we're working on. So very excited about where things could go here with these two partners in particular. Didn't render particularly well on this slide, but that's okay. Our go-to-market with Cisco, again, you know, Cisco has about 95% of the Fortune 500 today. They use Cisco for some form of collaboration product. Um, these minutes are a little bit out of date, but it's at least this, if not double, those numbers right now. Um, uh, our pipeline continues to grow. I actually think that number is significantly higher now in the bottom left bullet. Um, we've just been introduced, even in the last two weeks right now, to uh, two or three massive oper global opportunities through Cisco. So there's momentum building, there's more sales momentum building. We're starting to find more sales folks at Cisco who are calling in inbound as opposed to us reaching outbound. Um, and I think we'll have some very exciting kind of news and results, quite frankly, to talk about through that channel here as we, as we come up through the August, September timeframe in this quarter. Our primary focus right now has been you know, software migration, getting us to the cloud. Um, so as we talk about changing the revenue mix of the company from a very hardware premises, one-time kind of sale model uh, on the product side, to really building technology that is cloud, right, or at least hybrid cloud at the, at the outset. So having the room connect to the remoter, really engaging that remoter on a user experience, and then ultimately moving the company to a full either hardware as a service or primarily software as a service over the next few years is really where the company's headed uh, at this stage. So we're making great progress moving to the cloud. 
uh, talked a little bit about artificial intelligence earlier and getting to an app level, but a lot of work in the development side is still going on. And I'm very, very excited about what we're going to launch here in the fall on the cloud side and really excited about the second, you know, second half of this year. And, and uh, I think we all are in some degree, right? Hopefully coming out of this very particular time we've had in history. And I think uh, many of us in the technology space are very, very excited about what the future holds with, with, respect, to, uh, with respect to collaboration. So just in summary, we have a, a great, exciting, and rapidly growing market. We have this fantastic distribution channel with Cisco that's starting to pay dividends now. And we have this great strategy right now that um, shifting to the cloud, we believe will be, you know, 10x our growth opportunity moving into the cloud over the next few years and, and really expanding operating leverage substantially into the into SaaS level kind of metrics, right? Moving your operating margins, uh, getting to profitability here in the next couple of years, year or two maybe. Um, and uh, and really just executing on the business plan that we laid out from the outset. So I know we've got some Q&A. I also know I'm well over my time um, and, and want to be respectful of others. Um, so what I'll do is I'll try to – I have all these listed. I have your email addresses. I will um, try to get back to you directly on your email addresses. Um, and, uh, and if not, there's also an opportunity to key, have one-on-ones with me directly over the next few days. If you'd like to get in the schedule, please contact, uh, please go through Issue with Direct, obviously, but also contact Brett Moss at Hayden IR, and uh, I'd love to speak to all of you individually. So uh, thanks again for attending today. I really appreciate everyone's time. Be safe, be healthy, and uh, I wish everyone great success here in the second half of the year. So. That's a wrap from my side, Sherry. Thank you. This does conclude today's webcast. You may disconnect at this time, and thank you for your participation.